What is up, everyone? Good morning. Can you hear me? Let me know. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Let me know in chat. If you're my Wolfpack people, we are in the YouTube chat, all right? That's where we're going to be this morning. Where's everyone joining me from this morning? It's good to be back, y'all. I know we did one yet last week, but a little lackluster. So we're going to get right into the markets this morning. We're going to get right into some pre-market prep process, all right? That's what's most important. Yesterday, we had a few runners, ONMD specifically okay perfect gap and crap reversal on a bottom bouncer right a bunch of my people nailed this one yesterday really basic held pre-market levels really nicely buck hold all right dollar as we know on nasdaq's on listed place but specifically nasdaq's the dollar is important okay that dollar level very very important um as when it goes below that for long enough, they become non-compliant and we all know what happens there. Well, we don't all know what happens, but a lot of them will have to do splits. A lot of them, you know, there's a lot of things that revolve around a dollar. That being said, ONMD, nice buck hold in the morning, higher low. Okay. If you were playing this correctly, how I like to play stocks, especially gappers, big gappers on first green days, which this was yesterday. I'm sorry, first day, uh, day one gapper. Sorry, one second. Recent SPAC as well on ONMD. Okay. So it was a first gap day yesterday. Right. And we talk about all, we talk about this all the time. We talk about this all the time. Uh, between this, there was this and Pally, right? Most noobs, most crappy traders in my eyes, this is where they're buying it. Areas like this, okay? The morning high sets up high a day, right? Morning highs are setting up nicely here. This is where everyone buys. This is where gurus tell people to buy. But this is also where you're getting not very great risk reward most of the time. Oftentimes, you're going to get stopped out by candles like this, okay? Candles like this. So, with the real entry there yesterday, and it gave you plenty of opportunities, was down here. And the, this is an area I sell into. I hope you guys understand that. Risk, reward, down up in this area. I like to sell into high of day as my first target when we're below high of day and below VWAP, all right? So I'd be looking to get one to three, one to five. This is one to six if you're getting a buck entry, right? To high of day. Then when it gets to VWAP, you're looking at one to eight, one to nine. If it goes back to this level, which it did, we marked out pre-market yesterday. Shit, one to 17. Guess what happens if it gets to pre-market highs and you nail an entry? One to 35. One to 35, all right? What about this? What about if you're trading these, this Billy, we call him and her guy and girl, doesn't matter who it is, Billy, the high day buyer, the shitty noob high day buyer is Billy. You're getting one to three, you're getting one to 2.8, right? If we're risking low of day, which risk needs to be, generally speaking on these morning plays, you're getting, not even getting one to three if it gets all the way back to 215. All right. Thank you guys. <laughs> Boom. This is what we're talking about. My bad. Okay. Here's the buck hold on ONMD. Here's buck 60 pre-market highs ONMD from yesterday. Okay. This is a really, 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 really important point I'm trying to make for you guys this morning and gals. All right. Speaking of which, if you're excited to have me back, go ahead and smash that like. Smash the like. It helps the channel. Um, it helps push this out to more people and helps me do this for you guys for free on here. Okay. Buck 50 highs, right? Pre-market previous day and then 220. So all we did was mark out a few levels on the chart.
okay? Higher low on the five minute chart, entry needs to be down in this area. Take profits, take profits at VWAP, take profits into every level of resistance. Become take profit levels, not buy levels, guys. Not buy levels if you wanna do this and have longevity trading gappers to the long side, okay? So that's ONMD. Um, let's get into the scan for this morning. All right. For those who don't know how I scan, if you're just joining me for the first time, you know, there's no real magic in scanning, right? There's no real magic in scanning. You guys good. You had the chart, right? Now you have my scan, right? Let me know in chat, please. Sorry, y'all a little rusty on the uh, on the old streaming, you know? But for filters, I don't have much, all right? I filter almost nothing. $50,000 volume, 5% gain. That's it, all right? What I'm doing is casting a wide net. Now, I don't like trading the liquid stuff. I don't like trading the liquid stuff, but... Okay, the theme over the last few weeks, and it's continuing on this morning, I can tell you with 100% certainty for now, besides RVSN, which hurts me because I had RVSN and the dollar at a buck 14, are bottom bouncers, right? Stocks under a buck, 10, 20, 30 cent stocks that are pushing. Same with ONMD yesterday, you guys. Went from 40 cents to $2, right? To the, yesterday's biggest percent gainer went from 40 cents to $2, right? 40 cents to $2. So that's what I need to be looking at. We got to keep it simple. Volume will go to something similar, generally speaking. So on something like when ONMD is the biggest percent gainer yesterday, bottom bouncers were the biggest percent gainers last week, my attention is going to be on basically sub $1 stocks right now. So we get to the scan. We get to our scan, okay? And lo and behold, the first, the top 3% gainers with the most volume this morning are all stocks under a buck. ATPC gapping 90%, an $18 million volume, seven, 18 million volume as well. AGFY gapping 60%, CISS gapping 30%, not as much volume. Then we've got ITRM here. All right, I don't see catalyst on ATPC. The 25th, they said that they're unveiling plans. Uh, oh, they ring the opening bell ceremony. It's not a, it's not a real catalyst, but um, I have seen it move stocks slightly in the past, but kind of rare. PXLW, Walt Disney Studios, first multi-year agreement, True Cut Motion Technology. That's Pixelworks, okay, a little bit bigger float. Um, ITRM, we just, ITRM announced positive top line results from their phase three, reassure clinical trial of oral sulipenem, uh, and uncomplicated urinary tract infections. That's going, what's going on with um, ITRM, 12.8 million float or so. That one gets my attention too, even, even though it's not a bottom bouncer. RVSN, PR this morning, they reveal their next generation AI computer for safety and accident prevention. Uh, that sucks. We're going to go through that chart because I was swinging that from the dollar range. I sold it in like at like two bucks or something, which sucks. MOTS published positive results from a European study of second generation peer review system and, imp and improving visualization for colonoscopy in patients with a history of poor bowel preparation. They've got a PR as well. Okay. So MOTS has a PR, IVP, 20 cents, looks like a bottom bouncer. San M, a little higher price, GDHD, bottom bouncer as well. No real catalyst there. All I'm doing right now, I'm looking for catalysts. I'm trying to get all the information that I can take from the top percent gainers. We're gonna go over to the charts. We're gonna throw them there. We're gonna take that. We're gonna put it into dilution tracker where we need to. So we're gonna check the fundamentals really quick and we're gonna get the roll of this process in the next 15 minutes. And if you're stoked about that, make sure you, st you uh, smash the like button, all right? Because a lot of process that I see is just faulty. You get to the one minute chart, Let's like ATPC, for example, this is your process. Ooh, ATPC's on the skin, right? 
It's the top percent gainer. Okay, let's uh get to the chart. And we go straight to this one minute chart like this. And this is what we do and we're here. And this is the process. When it starts to spike, if it goes through high a day or pre-market highs, that's what I'm gonna buy. That's most noobs process, I promise. I know, that was me. That was me, okay? That was my process. First stop always, always, always needs to be the daily chart. Okay, when we're talking pre-market process, we're talking daily chart first. That's going to give me a big picture. What am I looking for on the daily chart? I'm looking for gap downs. Um, I'm looking for big volume days. Okay, big volume days. There's no real big volume days here. I'm looking to see what this chart's been doing. Have they done reverse splits? Okay, what does the chart look like? In this case, it looks like some kind of SPAC uplisting. Okay, looks like it was an OTC or something and then a SPAC uplisting, ATPC, right? Right on this day. You can see they went from nothing to something on this day. $3 was the high, okay? Post SPAC merger, which I'm assuming this is based on the chart. Again, like I said, the daily chart is what's important there, okay? That was in October. So they've only been trading for a few months, right? Three months or so. Three was the high, fades, no real volume. They did a little bit of volume um, post merger, okay? They did a tiny bit of volume here and spiked a little bit. And since then, nothing, nothing really, okay? Nothing to write home about until yesterday did a little bit of volume spike to 50 cents on ATPC. So that was maybe kind of the first sign that they were, may, that they were gonna be gapping today. So now I know I've got a lot of information just from the daily chart. Let me know if that makes sense in chat, please. All right, the daily chart. No gap downs. Why am I concerned about gap downs? Usually if there's gap downs, there are offerings. Okay. Usually if there are gap downs, there are offerings or bad news. Neither are good. Um, why do, and then uh, why do I look for reverse splits? Because generally the float's low. In this case, it's a recent SPAC merger or whatever it is. There may be some lockup periods on shares that they can dump. There may be some things going on. All right. So now we get to the one minute chart. Now we'll get to the one minute chart. Um, actually, sorry. We have one more stop left. We have one more stop left, which is one of my the most important tools that I use on a daily basis, which is dilution tracker. This has cut process down so fast for me, okay? In terms of, are they diluting where, when, how, how many? ATPC, just as I kind of suspected, there were no gap downs. It's a recent, uh, it's a recent SPAC merger or whatever else it is right there, right? Or IPO, so there's not too much. They've got just this up, oh, yep. Look, uplisting. It's an uplisting from OTC. It's back merger. Okay, so this is an uplist. It's S1 um, at four bucks, right? So that's all they've got. Simple enough. I hope this makes sense, but um, there's not too much going on historically here, dilution wise, for ATPC at the moment. So now, now we get back to the chart. Okay, I know that they're that it's fairly clean dump wise. They're not going to be dumping too much. Okay, I know that this chart is kind of like ONMDs yesterday, right? Look, watch this. Look at this pre market. Y'all see this pre market? That now this one got to the twos. Granted, right? This one got to the twos. Um, but similar enough for me to be interested, okay, in ATPC's move right now. How do I break it? How do I break this down now? Okay, how do I break this down? Very simple. Let's keep it very, very simple for ourselves. Okay, we've got, I would say, um, this area, support resistance here, right? Which it's already in at the moment, right? From earlier from after hours yesterday here and pre-market this morning. Um, and then really we've got like this area of support down here. This area, this area, we've got some resistance up here, right? All the way through the low ones to the mid ones. And that's exactly how I'll look at this, okay? This is potential support area, right? Same here. Potential support area, meaning potential dip buy areas are here. All profit taking up here, right? All the noobs are just waiting up here to buy. I sell to them. 
I sell where the short sellers are going to be stepping in. If shorts step in here, whatever it may be, that's what I'll be watching. Right? Seeing that we're opening right around one right now. Okay? Seeing that we're opening right around one right now. This could easily hold. Hold a buck and just start spiking towards pre-market highs. Or we could drop down towards this next kind of level. Right? If one fails. If one ends up failing here. So that's what I'll be watching this morning. I don't... If it holds and goes there's no trade for me really i don't I, i'm gonna need it to kind of set up a little bit i would rather see it hold and go if i'm playing a buck hold right if i'm playing this level okay so if we get one of these moves in other words right one of these moves, great, okay, great. Then the idea for me becomes something like this. I'll be watching for the turn. I won't just trade it for no reason willy-nilly. And then I'll be watching for high a day. I'll be trying to get one of five to there. So there still could be a trade there, right? Um, one to five back to high a day. One to what? Seven to VWAP, pre-market highs, one to... 15 so i can get a decent trade down there still right that's what would be ideal for me this morning if it does anything other than that i'll probably leave it alone okay so if in instead we just get a straight morning spike and it starts doing this and pulling back and doing all these things then i'll probably leave it all right most likely so we'll see we'll see how it we'll see how it pans out you know i like to have multiple plans for multiple ideas i don't like this plan as much as i like this plan um, but I also am not so sure that that can reclaim a buck if it gets down to like 60, 70 cents, if that makes sense. So I'll be a little bit nimble there, but that's the idea. Okay. I hope that makes sense. There's ATPC. AGFY is our, our next gainer. ATPC's floats a little bit bigger as well. Remember that. It says 50 mil here as the float. 77 shares outstanding. AGFY's daily chart. Looks like we've already, <laughs> look at that, guys. I went through this live with the Wolfpack people, what, a couple weeks ago, right? That's why I still have these little guys up here, my short sellers and everyone else from that, from that move. So bag holders, short sellers, all that good stuff on this chart. We go to the daily chart. It kind of cancels it out for me, y'all, pretty easily, okay? They already ran recently. Um, they did this split here, faded earlier in the year. I'm sorry, already, um, this year, looks like. Split pump earlier in the year. Big gap up. They were very dilutive, I believe. I'll likely just ignore a chart that looks like this, guys, right? Granted, it went 280 to 50 cents in a few days. That's because they were just dumping uncontrollably. Okay. Um, breaking down just the one minute chart this morning. Right. Oftentimes, it's easier to find your levels the higher time frames we go. Right. It's not even really worth breaking down to me. It's something like this, to be honest, I'm not going to trade it. Even if it goes, I hope it goes. I always hope it goes, right? But kind of a funky pre-market chart. Resistance at a buck for now, right? Kind of in this area, through and to a buck. We'll see what they do. Dirty dumpers, these guys. Dirty, dirty dumpers. Just did it. Just dumped a bunch, okay? CISS is our next top percent gainer this morning. Another one of these uplisting or SPAC mergers. This one's from June. Okay. Big gap down recently on the daily chart. Big gap down recently on the daily chart. We have, by the way, we've only got seven minutes left. If you have any questions, if there are any tickers that you want me to take a look at before we get going, let me know. All right. This is, um, we'll be live again next week, but tomorrow I'm heading to Park City for our Wolfpack retreat. I'll be with 50 students in Park City. We'll be snowboarding, trading for two or three days, trading, snowboarding, doing a bunch of psychological work. Um, it's going to be badass. Can't wait. 
So I can't wait to see you wolves out there tomorrow. Mm. CRBP, yeah, that was a nice one. Um, I'll be watching that for a first green day bounce. That's the, that is the pattern there for me right now. I'm watching this one for a first green day bounce. In one of these areas, likely 13, 14, 15, 16, something like that. It's what I'm looking for. Maybe they're going to get a 20 hold. I don't know. Higher priced. Rev B tried to do, do it yesterday a little bit, right? Rev B yesterday. RVSN was a swing that I had, and I just guess I needed to just hold it forever, I guess. All 16,000 shares from a dollar. Would have been nice to have right now, y'all. You know, I and I was swinging it a while ago off the split, so I had it at a buck fourteen, and I sold it here or here. When was it? The end of December. I'm sorry. Yeah, I sold it like up in here. It's stupid. <laughs> let's go. Let's keep hitting these tickers. CISS. Like I said, it's kind of a recent spac uh, merger. It looks like. Um, dilution tracker. I've got links, by the way. I've got a link to dilution tracker, all the tools that I use um, in the description of this video. All right. This tool specifically has just changed the game for me. I don't have to sit there going through 10 cues, reading, reading, reading. I can get through filings in one boom like that. I get what I need. Sometimes I need to do a little bit more, but most of the time I get what I need. So here's an example of something that is dilutive, right? On CISS, we've got overall medium risk. We've got overall Offering ability low, um, high overhead supply, historically high, cash need low, right? So risk is medium. Their risk ratings are pretty decent. They've got 60 million available to convert um, with convertible preferred shares and 46 million to convert with warrants, right? Their S1 offering was priced at a buck oh five. Um their 23 S1, their January 24 S1 was was priced at 25 cents, which is why, okay, which is exactly why when we go to this chart, this stock gap down from here down to 15 cents on the 24th, 25th, right? I'm sorry, on the 19th, 20th, because of this, because of this uh, S1 priced at 25 cents from Aegis, right? So they've got 28 million warrants outstanding at 42 cents. 42 cents. So if this stock gets to 42 cents where it was, they've got 28 million shares to dump, you guys. They've got uh, at a buck of five, another 4.8 million. They've got 60 million in convertible shares to be dumped, right? 15 million in, uh, with a 25 cent conversion price. 25 cents. So at 25 cents, there's 60 million shares that can be issued. Right, you guys? Full ratchet, too. Full ratchet. Which means if someone else comes in and they do another round and offering lower, these guys get to change their conversion price. The lower it gets, the more money they get. Right? So. I hope that makes sense. Does that make sense, y'all? It's really, really important you understand this. At 25 cents, these guys can dump a shit ton of shares, right? Right now, where are they gapping to? Well, they got to 25 cents yesterday. Look at that, y'all. Look at it. Look at that 25 cents, my lord. Okay? Smash the like, please. I'm not feeding you nonsense. I'm feeding you the truth. I'm feeding what you, what hopefully is going to help you become successful in this game. If you're not looking at fundamentals, if you're not using stuff like dilution tracker, if you're not aware that gap downs usually equal offerings and they have shares to dump, we're playing a game of supply and demand here, you guys. We gotta be on the right end of it. Long, small cap, but long anywhere. Retail long are pawns in the game. We are the pawns that are used to raise funds for these fucking assholes. And if you don't understand that, you cannot trade successfully. And if your guru's not teaching that, you need to fucking leave them because they don't know what they're talking about. They don't know how to trade small cap. If they're not looking at filings and telling you where the dangers are, 
when they're trying to trade listed stocks, you need to leave that guru immediately, in my opinion. All right. Come to the pack. There's a code in the thing. Come to the pack. There are so many things that make the people in the pack successful and have made me successful over time. And it's not chasing high day and buying breakouts. That stuff's bullshit, guys. And if you've been trading it long enough, you know it's bullshit in your heart. So why are you still doing it? Figure something else out, in my opinion. That's my rant for the morning. We are pawns. They're dumping on us. All of these companies. But they're all, so they're scams. They're essentially scams, right? But when you know it's a scam, you can place yourself correctly and take advantage of the scams because they're beautiful. They'll move 100, 200, 300, 500%, 1,000% intraday sometimes, right? Crazy moves we get. Crazy moves we get. But it has to be contextualized so that you can actually take advantage of it, which means buying in the right spots, low, selling in the right spots, high, really basic do that make money get great risk reward check the filings check the fundamentals right mots um the two that are most interesting to me this morning mots um iccm mots there's another one that had a pr itrm all right, which I got to look at too. Normally, so the markets are open, right? I'm going to give you guys a few minutes of market open. How about that? Let me know if you want that. In chat, smash the like. We'll just do a few minutes. If you're going to be taken off, no problemo. Good luck today, my friends. Good luck today. I just want to get through a few more tickers. ITRM. Um... Here's their daily chart. They've already been grinding, right? They've already been grinding. They put out a PR and they're kind of up near high. So they've got a potential breakout chart working out. I don't like buying breakouts, but if I'm going to be buying a reversal, I can buy a reversal and see the breakout happening. That's why it's all about the daily chart, right? So if I get to AT ITRM, it's already breaking down levels right now, okay? It's already breaking down levels right now, which is fine. Here's the next level, kind of 210 area. That's what that I'd be watching for, for a potential dip buy on something like ITRM. Again, it's opening up near kind of a breakout level. So for me, if it can two hold, it can break out. That's how I see this chart. Let me know if that makes sense in chat. Highs are only 250. So 220, if this holds, if this reverses, um, 250 is the breakout level that we saw people dip buying this morning. Look, people buying this, dip buying the breakout. I hope y'all are following me. Um, so people were buying that, in other words. Anyways, the idea for me, if I'm playing a reversal, is I can get both a single, but also be macro-minded on something like this. When I see a breakout forming, I know that like, Noobs are going to chase the breakout at 250, right? I know it. I know that there are, if I'm new, I'm like, I ain't buying this shit until it gets up here. That's the only way I'm buying that, you know, then it's going to be strong. But the idea is to get great risk reward, get a reversal, take it to highs and be good. Okay. I'm going to work through a few more tickers. Then we're going to get to live trading in the pack. We're going to get to uh, the stage in the pack. Okay. I just wanted to get through the tickers real fast. RVSN ripping, IVP, ATPC. Let's check out what the gappers are doing this morning right out the gate. This one, a little bit of fade out the gate on ATPC. AGFY, again, I'm not a fan from a macro standpoint of AGFY. They just tried to gap big and got destroyed. So, you know, kind of here nor there. RVSN, again, I had it in the ones and now I feel like shit. So I'll just let that go. IVP is kind of a freshy. Oh, I remember them. We've worked on them in the past. This is not a fresh gap day. This is a first green day bounce. And this is actually the pattern on this that I missed. This is the buy day. Um, not so much today. I missed it. I've been teaching this pattern as a swing to my students for what the last couple weeks. Well, longer than that, but trying to emphasize this pattern when bottom bouncers are in, we get stocks go from 10 cents to 20 cents, 30 cents. Okay, back to 10 cents, it becomes a buy again. Okay, so normally first green day bounces when we get a big move from like this went to 15, 10 cents to 50 cents, right? 5X, 
4x fade all the way back down so normally we'd get like you know red day red day and then maybe a first green day up here if y'all are following me okay if you're not smash the like and we'll i'll explain it normally we'll get a couple big moves if it's a parabolic and then we'll get kind of a green day up in here with bottom bouncers that go from 10 cents or 15 cents in our dilutive and then move 100, 200, 300%, 500% on huge volume, I actually wait for them to retrace completely 100% of their move, essentially. If they come from 10 cents, they go to 50 cents, I wait for them to get all the way back to 10 cents and then I rebuy it if I can. I missed it here. This is the pattern. This is the pattern. And then profit target is going to be about 50% of the move, usually. Very crude, but I'll look at this, say it went from 10 to 50, and on a day like this, I'll say maybe 25 cents, maybe 30 cents. I try to keep it realistic, in other words, all right? IVP, um, CISS, PXLW is pixel works, bigger float, getting smacked for now. Um, SLNA, TIBC. Not a lot of volume there. I'd be watching splits again, by the way. RVSN should get people a little split centric too. TRM. ITRM breaking down a little too, but let's see if they're going to hold two is really the question for me. Whole dollars, half dollars, you guys, super important always. You know, maybe this is just a dud for now. Maybe a bunch of people bought it or trapped and it's going to be a dud. Let's check out their filings really fast and do my job. Not too bad. They got an ATM. That's about it. Baby shelf restriction. They can only raise 9 mil at the moment. They've got an H.C. Wainwright ATM with 10 mil on it. Bet your ass that they're using it still, but. So there's that. Look at a few more tickers, then we're going to get back, get to my students in the pack. All right. Make sure that you're smashing the like if you're enjoying this session. Um, yeah, that's about it. What other tickers? Any tickers y'all want me to look at before I before I get going? Usually, I'm letting these things shake 10, 15 minutes anyway, so I'm not going to be you know placing any trades at the moment. The way things are shaking out, though, ITRM, I'd be watching for this two hold here. Um, ATPC is getting a little double bottom reversal in for now, it looks like. So we may be holding already. Right? We tried to make a new low here. And it's holding. Which tells me maybe we're going to try to get a push now. Right? Maybe I'd be premature buying in this area. Right? As well. So. Um, we'll see what they do with it. I usually err towards the side of, of caution and a little bit of extra patience, right? I, I do not call ATPC a day two. I'd call it a day one. It, yes, it did have a little bit of volume yesterday and have a green day. But it went from like 40 cents to 49 cents. It wasn't, a, there was no catalyst. This morning, it's done 20 million shares. It's the first minute of the first seven minutes of the day. Today's the first day. Today's the day one for me. And we've got a little bit more push already. So pushing back towards highs. Uh, no problem, my friends. No problem.
All right, any questions? If not, we are going to wrap this one up so I can get to my students in the pack. We're going to get to the Discord right now. Um, the main stock chat, we're going to go to Wolf Stage. Wolf Stage today. But if you enjoyed this, please smash the like. Um, oh, man. Right? So the problem here is that I'm late now right this i'm supposed to be selling some into this area it is high a day right so really this would be my first target on a reversal when i'm looking at this like trying to get one to five there is the is the plan even on a bottom bouncer not a lot of range here right 95 cents 87 cents but you can still make it crack appropriately you know if you're getting the right entry one to five one to four one to three still I would need 88 cents or 89 cents or below as my entry so I can sell some in a high day and still make money if this doesn't work, okay? That's the idea behind this. But then if it does work and we get pre-market highs, you know, or we start to break towards highs again, then I'm getting ridiculous risk reward on my position, okay? That is always the plan. But if I'm buying it, 94, 95, 96, I'm chasing. All right. Hell yeah, buddy. All right, my friends. Anyways, thank you so much for joining me this morning. I do got to get to my students. Um, we're going to go live again next Tuesday. Every single Tuesday this year, we'll be going live for you guys doing pre market prep. All right. I'm going to bring a couple of streams to you. We're going to be announcing boot camp dates, in-person boot camp dates pretty soon. Um, we've got a coupon code if you want to be in the pack. I do live webinars every single day, every morning. Um, I'm going to get back to doing power hour prep webinars every day that I can as well. Nice little hold on AGFY, which I just, again, the macro there is just so ugly to me. ATPC looking like it wants new highs and stuff like that at the moment. RVSN, I'm not going to chase um itrm is the other that i'm watching for potential two hold it's still weak for now but they've got a decent catalyst and float size is acceptable um but yeah if you want if you want to join us that's the best group in the game man trader therapy on fridays one-on-ones i do um with my students and it's just crazy shit going on in the back right now so i'll be taking off for park city tomorrow um to spend a bunch of time with a bunch of you guys 50 50 students or so in total will be out there so we'll be spending the next four days snowboarding uh trading just like building relationships and stuff so it should be totally awesome if you enjoyed this stream again please smash the like i gotta get to live trading with the pack everyone stay safe i love you all I'll catch you next week